ask anyone in the comic book world who has the best villains, and they'll always tell you the two uh, the two biggest ones are Spider Man and Batman. Now, this video pretty much is going to be me talking about one of those two sides of which I think has the more relatable villains. Now, keep in mind, I do love the Spider-Man rogues. There are some amazing... Uh, Spider-Man has some of the most amazing rogues gallery, not just in the Marvel Universe, but in comics in general. They are some of the most twisted and animalistic creatures, not and also somewhat... Re and also relatable, but this is also based off of a conversation I had with uh, Shades at Night, and this is... It, it, which is a which was an offshoot of a conversation he had with Tori GNR1, and we talked about it, and we both agreed that we think, uh, in terms of, like, who has the greatest rogues gallery, it's definitely gotta be Batman. Now, Spider-Man is a close second for me, because I'll tell you why I think Batman has the better rogues gallery. Now, I'm saying I love all the rogues gallery, but if you want to compare, like, who has the best, it's gotta be Batman. It's not because I'm some Batman nutty hugger. Truth be told, I'm more of a Superman fan than I am a Batman fan. But when it comes to rogues, there's nothing more interesting to, uh, to Batman than the villains that he has to face on a daily basis. Admit it. We all love... The one thing we love more than Batman is, is his rogues. He has such a diverse gallery, and all of them have their own traits and personalities that make them almost relatable. Like, take, for instance, the Riddler. The Riddler is a perfect example of narcissism and OCD. This is a guy who has, you know, he has to have it his way. He has to prove that he's smarter than everybody else. And in one point of life, you've known somebody like that, or you have something akin to that. You, you have to have, like, you have that little bit of narcissism to you. Everyone has a little narcissism to them. I have a bit of narcissism to me. Uh, everyone has that little ego inside them. And that's the same thing with a lot of his other rogues. There's a lot of relatability to them, and everyone seems to know them. Now, yes, that's the same thing you could say with Spider-Man's rogues. With Spider-Man's rogues, you can go up to somebody and they'll tell you, you know, Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin, Venom, and on occasion Carnage, and, and also the Lizard, and stuff you've seen in the movies. And this is going for non-comic book fans, if you ask them on the street. But if you ask, you know, what are some of Batman's rogues, and they'll tell you Joker, Penguin, Mr. Freeze, Scarecrow... You know, Catwoman, Poison Ivy, Joker, all of them, you know, they'll give you the big ones and a lot more lists to them because I think they've, the Batman rogues have not only been, you know, they're, they have a little more relatability, but also, you know, they have, uh, they have the better, uh, they have, you know, the better exposure. That's the words I was trying to get out of my mouth. Uh, they have the, I think they have a little bit better exposure to them. They've been in cartoons, they've been in movies, they've been very hyped up in shows a lot, and they're very well exposed characters, and they're very diverse. Everyone has that relatability to them. Like, um, like I was talking about with Harley Quinn in my top ten most attractive women in animation. The reason why a lot of people seem to like Harley is because she has that sweet, bubbly attitude, but she's with the guy who's, you know, is nothing good for her. And we've all known that type of girl in our lives. At one point or another in our lives, we've known that type of girl. Where you just say, you just want to tell him, you know, leave him, ditch him, go find somebody else. Good Lord, stay away from him. But she keeps going back because she's like, oh, I can change him, it's fine, we all know that story. And that's kind of the thing with a lot of other rogues. I mean, Mr. Freeze. Uh, Mr. Freeze is another good example. This is a guy who is so dead to the world, but... You do, re you do have that s a kind of sympathy for him, because everything he's doing, no matter how barbaric it is, he does it for what he believes is a good cause. Again, something that, you know, the ends justify the means. I'm pretty sure that's something a lot of us can com comprehend. And another great example of this is Harvey Dent, Two-Face. You see, that's the other thing with Spider- with, excuse me, with uh, Batman's rogues gallery. With Batman's rogues gallery, you have also this, like I said, relatability, like, we've all been there, that just breaking point, and, Har and no one knows that better than Harvey Dent. Like the Joker said, it took one bad day to turn a man into a monster. And that shows pretty well with Harvey Dent. I mean, here's a guy who is a shining example of, of just, you know, the shining example of what Gotham could be, you know, what every citizen Gotham could be without Batman. And then he just gets broken and he becomes one of Batman's worst enemies. Among other things, you have, just with uh, Selina Kyle, uh, Catwoman's another good example of this. Catwoman is a character who rose above, in some ways, like Bruce Wayne, rose above, you know, being just a pro uh, 
rose above being these dregs and not being someone who will take who will lie down and take it. But however, she has this sense of freedom to her, and a lot of us can uh, can relate to that. Now, I'm not saying that the Spider-Man rogues have relate don't have relatability. They do. Rhino is a very re relatable character. If you've ever read that story, Flowers for um, uh, Flowers for Rhino. That story will make you cry. I swear to God, that that story. If you read Flowers for Rhino, you will shed a tear or just want to cry because that is a very tragic story. Uh, and what else was there? There was another one, like uh, Doctor Octopus. He's another great example. He, in my opinion, he uh, um, Otto is a very relatable character. Not so hot on Superior right now, but still. I mean, before then, Otto, like I said, is my fa all-time favorite Spider-Man villain. So, there is, like, a lot of relatability with them, but I think there's a little more on a grounded standpoint with Batman's rogues much more. I mean, another good example is, like, the Penguin, Oswald. You know, here's a guy who has so much power, and he hides behind that power, you know, using money to... He throws money at problems, thinking it will go away. I'm pretty sure that we've all kind of been there, that we, we or know somebody, that it's like, well, I can just throw money at the problem and it'll go away. I'm pretty sure we've known people or heard of people in our lives that have known that. I mean, that's kind of a lot of things with Batman's rogues, is because they're very, despite being the most horrible, psychotic people, even people like Clayface have that human aspect to them. Not to say Spider-Man's rogues don't have that human aspect, but it's more, they have more... They're a little more grounded, you know what I'm saying? Again, I'm not saying the um, I'm not saying the Spider-Man villains suck. God no, God for God willing, no, I will not say that the Spider-Man rogues suck. But I have to agree with uh, my good friend Shades at Night. I'm sorry, Dan, if you're watching, uh, but I gotta give it to the Batman rogues on you know just of which is the better rogues gallery between Batman and Spider-Man. I have to give it to Batman. And it's not because I'm not I'm not some Batman nutty hugger, but I I just feel like on those grounds I feel like that's why Batman has the better Rogues gallery. But I really want to know what do you guys think of this? Uh, do you do you agree with me on you know Batman? And again, this is just my opinion. You know, your opinion could be different from mine. That's totally fine. I'm not saying this is fact at all. I'm I am in no way saying oh this is just grounded fact and you should listen to me. Bah ha ha! Evil laugh. No, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, what I'm saying is that's just my opinion on why I think Batman has the better rogues between the two, and these are the two greatest rogues gallery, between Spider-Man and Batman. But you guys tell me, uh, who do you think has the better rogues gallery? Spider uh, Batman or Spider-Man? 